Hello and welcome back to EME 6429, Human Performance Improvement. I'm Dr. Tim Boylow, and in this module, we begin our discussion of performance analysis by focusing on organizational analysis. Recall from our review of the HPT model that performance analysis is comprised of organizational analysis and environmental analysis. In this module, our focus is on organizational analysis, and we will cover environmental analysis in the next module. Before proceeding, make sure that you have completed the reading assignment for this module as indicated in the course schedule. If you're all set, then let's go ahead and get started. Here is our agenda for the presentation. We begin with a quick overview of performance analysis as illustrated in the HPT model to provide a context for organizational analysis as the first process step in the model. Next, we turn our attention to the components of organizational analysis. This requires understanding the mission, vision, values, goals, and strategies, identification of data sources, methods for getting data from those sources, and a look at barriers to conducting an organizational analysis. The presentation will conclude with the looking ahead slide for next steps. Recall from our earlier discussion of the HPT model that performance analysis focuses on identification of the desired performance state, the actual performance state, the gap between desired and actual performance, and the causes for the gap. Organizational analysis provides a picture of the desired performance state, which is always where, where we want to begin. The desired performance state is derived from the organization's stated mission, vision, values, goals, and strategies. These elements define what the organization stands for and what it aspires to in terms of ideal performance. Environmental analysis, which we'll cover in the next unit, is used to establish a baseline for where the organization is at today. This requires analysis of the performance environment in terms of mega, macro, and micro performance as it relates to society, the workplace, how the work is being done, and worker attributes. The output of an environmental analysis is a picture of actual performance for the organization. The gap analysis, or gap in performance, is the difference between the desired state and actual state of performance within the organization. This provides data necessary to identify and prioritize gaps by opening lines of communication for cause analysis. Performance analysis helps to create dialogue and shared purpose among the different stakeholder groups. This ensures the buy-in necessary to build a network of trust and credibility within the organization. This is why performance analysis is absolutely critical to each of the subsequent phases of the HPT model. Let's now take a look at organizational analysis in greater detail. As we've seen, organizational analysis is the first step in the performance analysis process. The HPT practitioner charged with conducting the organizational analysis may be internal or external to the organization. The scenario that we've been covering in the Serious Performance Consulting textbook is from the perspective of an external consultant who has been hired. Bert, in this case, doesn't work for the company and is not part of the organization. This is an example of an external consultant. An internal consultant, on the other hand, is somebody that already works for the organization. There are strengths and weaknesses to both. But keep in mind, as an external consultant, you may first have to earn the trust of the stakeholders so that they are comfortable sharing information necessary to fully understand the organizational goals and values and strategic plans. On the other hand, not being part of the organization offers an unbiased perspective. In either case, you need to know what are the vision, mission, values, goals, and strategies of the organization. In other words, how does the organization see itself in the market? And what are the key performance indicators, or KPIs? The next question is whether all of the different stakeholders are in agreement on this desired performance state as identified by the KPIs. 
Is there a common vision or does each department have their own vision and their own goals, which may in, be in opposition to each other? Unfortunately, this is often the case where the left hand literally doesn't know what the right hand does or what other departments deem to be important. Critical issues are perceived problems or opportunities that determine an organization's success or represent a gap in performance to be closed. These may include increasing customer satisfaction, employee retention and decreased turnover, increased market share, reducing workplace injury, and so on. Here again, is there alignment among the different stakeholders as it relates to critical issues and how critical issues relate to the perceived problem? This brings us to a discussion of data sources required for completing the organizational analysis. When I talk about data sources, I'm thinking about documented institutional knowledge and the ways in which it is managed. This may be in a form of historical documents and other extant data that is curated for compliance and reporting purposes. We refer to this as explicit knowledge, which can be easily and quickly transmitted from one individual to another, usually in a form of a document or database. It also tends to be organized systematically and is aligned with other documents supporting the mission, vision, and goals of the organization. The other source of data is tacit knowledge, which resides within the stakeholders themselves. Whereas explicit knowledge is very easy to communicate and transfer from one individual to another, tacit knowledge is precisely the opposite. Tacit knowledge exists in the experiences of the individual employee, often without an official record. An additional challenge of tacit knowledge is knowing when it is useful and figuring out how to make it usable. This is because it may not be evident what stakeholders know, what they believe, and how such information affects the organization. Methods and related tools are used to collect data from stakeholders and other sources required for the organizational analysis, in addition to the types of documents that we discussed on the previous slide. The same types of methods may be appropriate for different parts of performance analysis by posing different questions to be addressed. Typical questions for an organizational scan are provided in Chapter 5 in the Fundamentals of Performance Improvement text as part of the assigned reading for this week. Observation is useful, for example, to see if the mission and vision statement is publicly displayed. Conducting one-on-one -on -one and group interviews is probably the most helpful tool for assessing both fact and perception. Group processes, including brainstorming and focus groups, are helpful for generating and prioritizing stakeholder ideas. Surveys can generate both facts and perceptions related to the overall direction of the organization. And reports or records of critical incidents and issues can be used to solve performance problems or promote performance improvement. It's very important to consider barriers to success in the organizational analysis not just for the organization, but also to the HPT process for performance improvement. What are the barriers that may stand in the way of the HPT practitioner as she tries to gain access to information needed to develop a systems view of the entire organization? Well, we've already touched on access to extant or existing data. Gaining access to organizational information may be particularly challenging for external consultants. Access to extant data, again, comes back to communication, use of data collection methods, and the importance of relationship building. Another barrier is related to building trust to ensure stakeholder support. Stakeholder support is essential for success in every phase of the HPT process. Trust builds credibility and stakeholder support to help champion your efforts. In addition to stakeholder support, senior leadership needs to be on board to ensure access and resources to support the organizational analysis. Lack of support at the job level from the worker's perspective may also create barriers to the organizational analysis. Workers may be reluctant to share realities of the job because of concern for retribution. This is an important point to keep in mind when talking with people within an organization and may require assurance of confidentiality and or anonymity where possible. Another issue is doubt that real change will occur. 
resulting in apathy. These are some of the barriers we need to be aware of, which comes back to the importance of relationships as a tool to earn trust and build credibility. End results represent the outcomes of the organizational scan. This should be a complete picture of desired performance at the conclusion of the organizational analysis. We first ask, are the organizational components aligned? Is everything working together or is there opposition between goals, creating conflict among stakeholders? Are the organizational components universally communicated and understood? Do all stakeholders understand what the organizational structure is with a shared vision as to what the goals and objectives are? Do actions and departmental goals support the stated mission, vision, and strategies? Referring back to the HPT model, the output of the organizational analysis is, fully, is a fully articulated statement of desired performance. Desired performance determined through organizational analysis along with actual performance determined through the environmental analysis are both needed in order to assess the performance gap. This brings us to the looking ahead slides for next steps in this module. Please continue to part three, which are the activities for this module. There is a single activity associated with this lesson, which is a discussion activity. Be sure to read the instructions carefully to complete this activity. A scenario has been provided that is common to the practice of HPT. This is where the client presents the problem in the form of a need for training. Consider this presentation along with your readings on organizational analysis. This, this discussion is intended to be a collaborative learning activity to provide additional context for practice of the techniques covered. Be sure to review the module summary in part four to confirm the module learning outcomes have been met and to make sure you have addressed all of the areas included in the module agenda. In the next module, we turn our attention to environmental analysis. As mentioned in this presentation, environmental analysis is that second half of the overall performance analysis. We conduct an organizational analysis to understand what the ideal or desired performance is. We do an environmental analysis to assess actual performance. And finally, we will begin work on a performance analysis assignment so there will be additional information forthcoming in, in the, the coming week. Well, that brings us to an end of this presentation. Please let me know if you have questions or concerns related to the material covered or anything else covered in the course. And until next time, this is Dr. Tim Boylow wishing each of you a pleasant learning experience, and I'll see you online.